50 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown signal detected. Landed it. And in sequence initiated. Phoenix made a number of really novel, unique observations, uh, in part because of the place we went. We were going up to icy northern Mars so that we could go somewhere where water actually was. We could literally follow the water, not just try to find evidence of water billions of years ago. We decided the best thing to do with it would be to use it as a bulk probe of the soil to measure properties such as thermal conductivity. And just by, again, sheer dumb luck, I showed up that year at an AGU meeting, stumbled across the Decagon Devices booth in the show, and saw this little KD2. And say, my goodness, these guys are already doing what we need to do in a form factor that ought to be able to fly to Mars. So that was the beginning of the relationship with Decagon, and we followed up with some maybe amusing cold calls to a company who's used to doing so soil science and food science, saying, how would you like to go to Mars with us? Martin called me up on a Friday afternoon and said, hey, do you want to work on developing a thermal property sensor to go to Mars? And my first response was no, really, I didn't think we had the resources to, to get into a development project putting something on a Mars lander. And I didn't think they really wanted us. When Mike came to visit the, the kind of following Monday after the fateful phone call, you know, for three or four hours, we sat down and talked about some of the coolest ideas that I'd ever come across, just doing soil physics not in this world. And it was an amazing conversation. For that whole time, we were just just fixed on, on this goal. How do we measure thermal properties on Mars? And at that point, we were in. We were ready to kind of sign on. I mean, address what you were asking if I was at all worried about, you know, market, working on a, a project on something that would go to Mars. I was too bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and inexperienced to, to have any of those hesitations. I mean, we were really wet behind the ears. I mean, <laughs> we, we jumped into this football. We were, we were very excited. <laughs> The thermal and electrical conductivity probe was probably the only instrument on Phoenix that worked perfectly from beginning to end. With Decagon, I think the very interesting agreement we reached from day one was that Decagon has had and has extraordinary capabilities in doing the measurement that we want to do. You know, it seemed like we had such a good working relationship that when you know he asked for something that we kind of had a can-do attitude we're like yeah of course we can do that let's give it a try and and just went on and I mean this was this was my full-time job I was devoted a hundred percent to that and and it was a decent portion of Colin and Galen's time as well so we had some time to to work through some of those things and it was it was pretty fun. Uh, we could say how hard would it be to add a humidity sensor and Decagon said, oh sure, we could do that, it would be a minor change, we've had experience in that. The number of times I came with what I thought were really hard problems, and the Decagon response was, we know how to do that, here you go. As I recall when these questions came up, it was something like, oh, I sure wish we had relative humidity on this thing, and, and our <laughs> response to that was so often, we, you know, we can do that, yeah, we, we could do relative humidity. Personally, I found one of the most interesting things to be the results that came out of the humidity monitor on the TECP instrument that Decagon built. Um, because for me, it, it made perfect sense once I looked at it. It was one of those things where you look at it and you say, oh, oh, that's how the planet works. Uh, honestly, you'd be surprised how often in studying Mars or another planet, you have those kind of moments where afterwards everything makes perfect sense, but our brains just aren't wired to think like Martians. And, and we're constantly applying an Earth framework. You know, so until an experiment points us at something and says, you know, that, that can only be interpreted as working in a way, in a certain way, do we realize that that should have been obvious to us all along. That was the case with the humidity. 
you get one shot at measuring Mars, right? So once in a lifetime, maybe for us, we get to send something to Mars. You, you try to eliminate all the possible limitations to that. So we were thinking, we weren't thinking how little can we get by sending to Mars. We were thinking how much stuff can we cram into this little thing so it's really cool. T minus 20 seconds now. 15 seconds. Locks topping and work. T minus 10. Nine. So it was still dark out and we're out there in a field at, at Cape Canaveral and, and waiting for this thing to, to launch and at, at some point, you know, it lights up the sky. It's an extremely bright light. I'd been working for years on an instrument, you know, that's 25 by 35 by 15 centimeters. That's about this big. And suddenly I'm looking at this 150-foot behemoth that somebody else has built that's going to carry my little experiment, my little experiment to Mars, and is humbling. It is truly humbling. And you see this candle light up the sky. And lift off of the Delta II rocket with Phoenix, a distant science outpost ceasing clues of the evolution at the polar region of Mars. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you think about these things and hope, you know, you think, well, I, I want to be a NASA scientist or whatever, and, and we got to play a part. What I think should come out of that discussion is that a small company of scientists who had a great passion for the science and for learning about new things were able to develop and fly and use an instrument that really came out of something that, that we'd never done before. And so the fact that we'd never done it before and we were able to be completely successful on the mission, I think is, is something worthy of note. Not relative to what everybody else did, but relative to what we didn't imagine we could ever do and which what we did.